Hey guys, welcome back to Talking Sass, and thank you guys so much for joining me. First off, before we get started, I want to say happy pride to everybody who is out there celebrating. Love is love, and I hope you have a safe and happy pride. Now today, I have two amazing guests, and I can't wait to get ready to talk to them. But before we do, let's talk about patreon.com slash sassysteffy. Starting at only $2, you're going to be supporting the show and getting so many great exclusives. So make sure you guys go check that out. Again, it is patreon.com slash sassy stuffy. If you'd like to follow along on Instagram and or on Twitter, feel free. I love new followers and I love interacting with everybody. So that is also at sassy stuffy on both of those. Now, if you're watching on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to go and hit that subscribe button because subscribers are so very important. I could do a whole episode on why. And also, don't forget, if you're on YouTube, hit that little bell notification so you never miss a second. If you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, please don't forget to go rate and review Talking Sass. Please give me five stars. And if you give a really cool rating, I will make sure that I read those here on the show. Now, on to my two guests. Of course, we have Dan Murphy that is gracing us with his appearance again, and I can't wait to share the pro wrestling history lesson that he gives us this month. And now on to my main guest of the day. I am so excited. I mean, she is a badass and has a legacy in professional wrestling that just is amazing. I mean, this woman is so well respected. She's been a part of NWA, WWE, ECW, AEW, and the list goes on. I mean, she's only just getting started, even though she just retired. Can you believe this? She is one of the most badass women, like I said. She's a former two-time WWE Women's Champion. She's a former NWA Women's Champion as well. She has a school that you guys can go train at if you're down in Texas with her husband, Rodney Mack, and with Thunder Rosa. And, you know, like I said, she's retired, but I bet she can still kick anybody's ass if she needed to. (laughs) So, of course, this is the one and the only Jazz. I am sitting here with the one and only, one of the biggest badasses in professional wrestling of all time, Jazz. Hey, Jazz, how are you? Hello, Sassy. How are you? I'm doing great. How's things with you and your family? You know, um, Stephanie, just blessed and and happy and loving life, enjoying life and, and thrilled to be talking with you. Oh, I'm so glad to have you on because I mean, we were talking, oops, we were talking previously. It's been at least five years. I think the last time would have been one of the shine shows that I saw you. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a bit of time. (laughs) Yes, for sure. For sure. And you know, like I mentioned, you're one of the biggest badasses in professional wrestling of all time. And like when I was doing my, obviously we have history, we know each other. But like mm-hmm. when I was doing my my research, your ECW, WWE, WWF, both of them, NWA, AEW, Impact. I mean, there's not a lot of women wrestlers who can <laughs> say that they have expanded that much time. I, I mean, all those different TV yeah. promotions. <laughs> I mean, that's just nuts. Yeah, you know, it just Stephanie, just just blessed, girl. And that's, that's the only word I have for it. Blessed. Like you said, not many, you know, and just to say little old me, you know, with these opportunities, just, just blessings. (laughs) Well, I mean, of course, any promotion would be blessed to have you be a part of their promotion. I mean, not only are you bringing just your in ring knowledge, but I mean, all those shows are TV productions. I mean, we're not even talking about independent shows at that point we're talking just the major productions Mm -hmm. and you bring all of that tv knowledge as well which is just today like i said you don't have a lot of women that have that much tv knowledge that they can pass on to the younger generation yes and that and that's where i'm at right now in my in my life now with with our school you know that's what that's how we train we're training them for tv 
Oh, that's amazing. And yeah. I know you run that obviously with your husband, Rodney Mack, and also mm -hmm. with Thunder Rosa, who we obviously all know, uh -huh. NWA and AEW. I don't know very many people that are working on two television yeah, two, shows. Two, right? At one time. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I mean, that's just having you and your husband mm -hmm. as trainers is amazing. But then you mm -hmm. add in Thunder Rosa as well. And I mean, she has the Lucha Libre style as yeah. well from down in Mexico. I mean, mm -hmm. She's been spending time in Japan, so yeah. you know she's bringing that to the table. So, yeah, it's I, very diverse. <laughs> I wish that I would have had that in my school when I went to training, but unfortunately, yeah. in Ohio, that's not <laughs> not very yeah. often that you get those kind of opportunities. I was kind mm -hmm. of in rural Ohio. I, yeah. I went through a couple the different. Things are just schools. so different now. Yes, you know? that too. It's so different, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's crazy it's just um more opportunities for women you know and girl i remember when we had to wear guys because there was enough girls for us to mm -hmm. have matches on shows so now it's like we're we're, we're taking over <laughs> well what do you think of today's women's wrestling like the scene i mean obviously you just recently did impact and you were there mm -hmm. tagging with jordan grace mm -hmm. you wrestled diana praza who's the impact women's yeah. champion I mean, what do you think of the women's products that are out there today? The product out today, man, they're just awesome. These girls, you know, they're 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 so so talented and um and have great attitudes, you know, that they're, they're passionate about the business, they're passionate about the women's division. And and to to sum it up in a nutshell, they're just happy that they're allowed to have a platform that they can get out and showcase, man, and, and just and just show the world that we are more than just, you know, a circus act. We're more than just, you know, tits and ass. Mm -hmm. Like we can go out there and wrestle and kick ass just like the guys can. Well, I mean, and you're obviously one of the <laughs> the women that have paved the way for us to be badasses. I mean, ECW, you were working men. Yes. I mean, WWE, WWF, not really mm -hmm. as no. uh, intergender exactly. friendly as some other no. promotions. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you've been in there hanging tough with, I mean, you've had just legends upon legends upon legends, including <laughs> yourself that, you you know, that you've worked. I mean, yeah. you've got the Trishes, the Lita's, um, Molly, Molly, Holly, Jacqueline. Ivory, yeah. Jacqueline. I mean, just these names that like people like me, when I broke into the business, these are the women that I was like, Yes, mm -hmm. but I mean, you guys were actually having real matches at that time because yes. shortly before that, it was more like you said, the tits and ass portion yeah. of everything, yeah. you know, gimmick matches, you know, panties yeah. and bra matches. Yeah, and, and I think um, people always ask me, um, were I ever asked to do any of those matches? I'm like, no, they never even, I don't think it was thought of, you know, for me to go out there and do that because. That wasn't me. And they knew it, just my style of wrestling. I knew it wouldn't fit. Yeah. How could I go out there in panties and bras and, and roll around? You know, it just, it just yeah, wasn't my gimmick. Yeah. It doesn't fit the character at all. No, at all. <laughs> <laughs> at but all. One of the things that I found really, really fascinating when I was doing my research, while you were holding the women's championship, you were the last woman to hold it as a WWF championship mm -hmm. and the first woman, obviously, because it's the same title reign, yeah. to hold it as the WWE Women's Championship. What was it like when WWE went from WWF to WWE? Really and truthfully, um, there was no difference with us. It was just a letter because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we still had a job to do, had to stay focused, you know, being a women's champion. It was just my job to go out there and just do the best I could and, and to try to stay on top. You know, it's one thing making it there, but it's like when you get there, you got to you gotta bust ass to stay there. So, you know, a lot of these, you know, these new ones, these millennials, as I call them, they don't realize that, you know, a lot of them still don't want to put the work in to get there. So it's like, could you imagine them getting there and still slacking off? It's like, once you get there, you really got to work double time to keep your spot. Well, especially so. in large promotions like WWE, I so mean, you weird. can't just take a back seat. You really no. got to keep proving yourself or else yeah. it's on to the next. On to the next and you'll be forgotten about. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
really quickly too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's no, it's like, yeah. oh, time out, let's go, uh-huh. next person. Exactly. And then like, yeah. you might not even be heard of for another two, three years, depending, mm-hmm. well, now luckily, With WWE NXT. also has NXT. So yes. let's say you need more training, you can go to the mm-hmm. PC center. Yeah, all that kinds of things and, you know, learn new moves or work on your repertoire as is Mm -hmm. and just improve, which is, I mean, could you imagine when you started back in 1999 that WWE would have like this performance center where you could just improve all the time? Because when I when I started with WWE, um, they had developmental and Mm -hmm. it was in Ohio. Mm hmm. You know, so no, it wasn't anything like what they have now. No, we were like in the first building didn't have heat, you know, it was a warehouse. (laughs) Yeah, and like you said, Ohio and Kentucky area, that's not very warm in the winter. (laughs) Exactly. So you go from there to where they're at now, it's like, oh my God, like, it's like being in paradise every day to go train. (laughs) Oh, that would be a blessing. I remember um, yeah. with my training, I mean, being in Ohio, it was like a old mechanics garage Yeah. and they threw two rings in there. And then you had the office area for like, you know, whatever you had to do over there, promos yeah. or whatever. But like in the winter, there was no heat. So we had space heaters and yeah, it was space heaters, yeah. a lot of times you're in your coat trying to lock up with somebody, but your mm-hmm. coat's so bulky, you're yeah. barely touching each other you know yeah, you do your rolls to warm up but as soon as you get out the ring you're right back cold <laughs> yeah yeah it's not yeah. but those were those were the as we call them the good days you know but it's like I if I had to do anything differently if I had to the opportunity to go back and do anything I wouldn't do anything differently at all you know I, I however what was given to me I take it and I and I hold on to it and I appreciate it and I cherish it I cherish those moments you know See, that's like one of the things like I really love about you is you're just all about like the positivity with, you know, inside wrestling, because you don't always see that some people are very bitter. They're Mm -hmm. upset with the way things happen. But you have always been like, I was blessed to be there. I did my job. I stayed there. And then when my time was up, I moved on to the next thing and did my best there. (laughs) That's it. I couldn't cry and shed tears. Not for long. Anyways, you Mm -hmm. know, it's like. Now what I'm going to do. All right. You know what? I see. I worked at Indies before I even went to WWE. So, yeah. you know, it was nothing new to me to go back and and step back and, and, and work Indies. And, and I've also had shoot jobs, you know. You got to do what you got to do. Got to pay the bills. Proud. Yeah, I'm not too proud. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's, it's nothing for me to go get a job right now. I got to do what I got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you obviously now have a family, but I mean, running your gym and with all, I know I've seen pictures of just, you guys have quite a few students there. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. It's growing like weekly. It's it's, it's crazy. But again, it's just another blessing, you know, Um, like you say, um, we have, I'm um, the women's director for SWE, which is promotion here in Texas, Mm -hmm. you know, so I do the booking of the women there um and thunder rosa has mission pro so you know we just we have things to offer our students and they're you know they're coming in and 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 want to get a piece of it well speaking of thunder rosa i know from just her instagram and her twitter and everything you see a lot of the girls that come from Mm -hmm. mission pro being or having opportunities at aew dark or elevation Mm-hmm. And to and have NWA, yeah, some and of the to girls have are. that kind of experience that mm-hmm. young in the business is just going to be so beneficial for yes. them as they continue to grow in professional wrestling. That's it. That's it. You're so right. You're so Ugh. right. Yeah, and and we're very you know lucky and and blessed that we have these platforms to help our students become a part of. So. Yeah, girl. It's like it says all about the positivity and the love and, you know, and the knowledge. And and, and that's how you continue to make the business continue to be better and better. It's got to share your knowledge, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to hog it all in and be selfish. That gets you nowhere. Absolutely. So, yes, ma'am. Well, 
Now, I know recently you were on another podcast, uh, the Angle podcast, I believe, and they were talking to you about maybe perhaps one day WWE Hall of Fame. And I saw that you wanted to have Paul Heyman yeah. induct you into the Hall of Fame. I thought that was kind of amazing because, I mean, obviously that's your big break you got with ECW mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like just of all the people in the world that you've worked yeah. with and everything like that, to pick out Paul Heyman, I thought was really amazing. And he's you... like, he's awesome on the mic, right? Yeah. <laughs> Even if I suck, he would go out there and make me sound like I was the best thing to slice bread. So it's like, why not, Paul? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. great. You know, yes. And speaking of Hall of Fame, in 2010, you were actually inducted into WSU, excuse me, WSU's yes. Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. along with Molly Holly and Don, uh, Don Marie that year. Yeah. I mean, that's 11 years ago. I mean, I know, right? and you still had a career <laughs> for so long. I mean, you just recently retired. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, what to me, that's crazy to induct somebody who is so you were so busy in the business at that time as well. <laughs> yeah. To induct you and at I, that time. I, I, I mean, it's, it's a great honor, obviously. Yeah. And I was not expecting that whatsoever. That came to, like a big shock. Yeah. I had no clue. No clue whatsoever. Sean, he really kayfabe that one from me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Sean, yes. I actually did a WSU Originals podcast back in March oh, for like yeah. what would have been like an anniversary style show. Yes. And like we talked about like having all these different people that we got to work mm -hmm. with and the knowledge yeah. that like people like you when you came mm -hmm. onto the show, what you did for us. And and one of the people that I know that you did a lot for, because I mean, when I had her on the podcast, she talked about this, was when you won the WSU Tag Team Championships with Marty Bell. Marty Bell, yes. 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 I mean, Marty she talks so that. highly about what she learned from you and just that, because I mean, you actually never got to defend the WSU title no. before it, before they lost it because they were doing a, a, a free bird rule with her and Tina and you. But mm. I mean... For Marty, she was like so starstruck. Like when they're like, Yeah, you and Jazz are gonna win the tag titles tonight. And she's like, Me and Jazz. Yes, yes. That was my first time tagging, the first match, and then that was the last time I ever tagged with anyone. Oh and up until now with Jordan Grace. Yeah. Recently. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's crazy that you've not really had that many tag matches. No. Wow. I didn't. Yeah, tell didn't me about it. That. I always ask these promoters, like, man, let can a tag and that was what <laughs> me to work singles. <laughs> well, I mean, who could blame them? They want to get their money's worth from jazz. I uh, mean, oh uh, yes, yes. I would yeah, feel now, the same even way. Even my like, retirement tour, sassy. I'm like, um, like, is there anybody that you would want to work? I'm like, uh, how about a tag match? You know, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, tag matches are great because, I mean, you've obviously worked so few of them, but I mean, I'm sure you understand the psychology and stuff. Yeah. Like, I like tag team wrestling because, like, I'll always take a singles match, you know, obviously, because yeah. mm -hmm. that's where you shine. Yeah. But, like, to share the spotlight with your tag partner mm -hmm. and the different psychology that goes on with tag wrestling. And, like, mm -hmm. I think maybe if there's anything that I would – go into the wrestling business and say needs improving overall, I would say yes. probably tag team psychology. Yes. There's some tag teams that are amazing and have it yes. down pat, but there's mm -hmm. some that I'm just like, just a little tweak. Yeah. They're out there having individual matches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Like your team. That's why it's tag team. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, you got to work to both tell the same story. <laughs> yeah. And some people, they're not always on that same story or not even just that team, but both teams are telling two totally different Yeah, stories. exactly. Everyone gets in there. It's like every man for themselves. Yeah. It's like, okay, just do a scramble match at that point. Yeah. Oh. And you know what else I, I'm not a, a, what I'm not a fan of is like triple threats. Yeah. I, so much I, going on. Yeah. It's, yeah. I'm not a fan of that whatsoever. Yeah, it, that, I mean, even taking that psychology to a totally different level than a yeah. singles wrestling too, because mm -hmm. especially it depends on like how you line it up too. If you have two heels and a baby face, 
Mm-hmm. Everybody knows that psychology. What's it's going to be? The heels yeah. are going to team up on the baby face, mm-hmm. and then they're going to eventually turn on each other. It's yeah. it's very difficult it to is. make. And then that. one has to be down, and you got to take something where you, where you think you got to take something big to keep you down for five minutes so they can get in the ring and do their shit and get their <laughs> shit over. You know, it's like okay. I'm down here selling for 10 minutes now. <laughs> yeah. I remember there was one time I had a match. Um, I remember Ember Moon was in it, but I can't remember who the other person was. But we were trying to figure out how all three of us could chain wrestle each other at the same time. It's not uh, easy. No, it's not. It's, it's very not. difficult to do a triple it, threat it match. It really is. It really <laughs> is. I tried. I've had, I've been blessed. I've been able to avoid those. Oh, <laughs> you're very yeah. lucky yeah i've been able to avoid it and two it's like promoters they they put a show together and then they have extra people and they don't have anything for them like oh well just just put them in a triple threat like yeah. no storyline no no history with none of the girls in the ring all three just in there just doing whatever no sense whatsoever so yeah well speaking of triple threat matches one of what i find to be one of my favorite matches of yours of all time was actually a triple threat match yeah at wrestlemania 18 with lita and trish Mm -hmm. i mean excellent match yeah like that was fifth family was our agent so oh it shows it shows that's right (laughs) (laughs) Well, take me through that. How was that for you guys? Because I mean, at this time, I mean, women's wrestling starting to be taken a little bit more seriously because of you and Trish and Lita and Victoria and Molly Holly, these women that are really the solid base of the women's division at that time. So how was it for you guys going into WrestleMania? Were you expected to deliver this outstanding match or were they just kind of like, okay, you guys are just on the card because we need a women's match? Well, truthfully, it was supposed to just be Trish and I in a mm-hmm. match uh, for Mania because Lita was out with her neck injury. Okay. But when she was able to come back, um, they just brought her and just threw her in the mix and we did the triple threat. But yeah, we um, we knew we had to go out there and prove um, to the world that we deserved our spot on Mania. You know, we, we worked our butts off. I mean, um, it was a lot of uh, going into that training wise, going into that and and also trying to be very careful with Lita and her neck because she was just coming back from her mm-hmm. neck being broken. But um, yeah, we was excited. And um, I went, I was going in as the champ, you know, and walk out as the champ for Mania. So it was most definitely a special, special moment for me. When everyone asks me, what's my favorite match of all times? I'm like, mania 18 you know (laughs) (laughs) it's like nothing nothing uh yeah can out shine that moment there you know it's it's a super bowl of wrestling Mm -hmm. so and being able to share it with two legends like lita and trish you know to say i was a part of that and a major factor key factor in that match so yeah just just grateful well, what I mean, how do you feel when women come up to you and tell you that that's like a match that really like made them take, you yeah. know, inspired them to get into wrestling or anything like that? It's really weird, Stephanie, honestly, because again, you know how I am. And I've never thought that it's still today. I, it's hard for me to grasp that people look at me as like, oh, you're this and you're that. And, and thank you. It's like I was just a person given an opportunity and I, and I wanted just to, um, if not be the best, one of the best women in wrestling, you know, and, and just, you know, I, I just try to just soak it in and, 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 um, and acknowledge that. But again, so humble that people, um, uh, look at me that way. So, um, it's just, you know, just one of those things, girl, just, just, Everything is just a blessing. I don't take anything for granted whatsoever. Yeah. I love that. I love how humble you are. Like, yeah. cause there's a lot of people that would take like a WrestleMania moment where they're walking in as champion and walking out as champion, especially against the caliber of women you were against mm-hmm. and be like, that was it for me. You know, like you should be inspired by me because <laughs> look at what we did in the ring. Cause yeah. it was so spectacular. Mm-hmm. And to have you be so humble and I mean, obviously, 
since I met you probably, I would, I started in 2007. So I probably met you 2008, yeah. 2009 ish yeah. to still have you be as humble as you are now. It's just, it's so great because. And me being this way and, and just trying to be a professional. That's why my career have lasted this long. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can't be selfish and, and, and a complete bitch and, and, and expect people to want to work with you. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's the key to longevity there. Just be a professional. <laughs> be, be, be the person that people want to work. Well, That's I mean, how you'd be successful. <laughs> yeah. And, and plus, on top of that, like I said, you're like one of the biggest badasses <laughs> in, in women's professional wrestling of all time, if not all of professional wrestling. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're welcome. I mean, you're you're small package, but man, you're like complete dynamite when it comes yeah, to the ring. That's what they say, right? <laughs> dynamite <laughs> comes in small packages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You well, know who else I think about a lot? Um, mm-hmm. um, Martinez, girl. I, oh, I just, uh, love her. Right? Mercedes, yes. Yes, Mercedes. She's she's like, I'm so happy for her. I really oh, am. Oh, me too. She Seeing deserves like, every bit of it. All of the years and the injuries and everything yeah. that she's accumulated everything, over the year, yes. and she finally gets to WWE. And I mean, she is absolutely killing it on killing NXT. It. Yes, she is. Yes, oh, she I, is. Like, I know a lot of people will probably be like, you know, being on the on the roster would probably be better, like the main roster. But mm-hmm. like her saying, like, I don't want to be a part of yeah. um, that group. Yeah. And then being like, please put me back down in NXT, Mm -hmm. I think was the greatest step in her career because Mm -hmm. I don't think she would have flourished the way she is now, like she is in NXT. Yes, exactly. She, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. Oh, she always has. Yeah. Always has. You're right about that. Always has. And, and I get a kick out of it because I remember when she first broke in, she was so quiet. You would, you wouldn't even know she was in the room. (laughs) so quiet and then i come to wsu and she's in the back running shit i'm like Mm -hmm. girl you talk (laughs) (laughs) not only talking but she's like giving out you know she's running things back there so yeah i remember i was in war games match with her it was uh team uh wsu which is what she was on against midwest militia me jessica havoc and allison k yeah. And I'm not a big religious person, yeah. but like, I know she is. Mm-hmm. And like, when we got, like, we called the match and everything and like, and I don't know, maybe five minutes before we're about to go out, I go, um, Mercedes, can we, can we pray? <laughs> can we come over here and pray with us? Cause like, it just seemed like that's yeah. the right thing to do at that time. Happy, because yes. like with her knowledge and everything, and then obviously there was things that happened in that match, but that's for another day. Yeah. But I mean, she's such a blessing to learn from as well. Like, I'm yeah. so sad that that match was the only match I ever got to actually work Aww. with her in. Yeah. So I'm like, but it happened. So, yeah. But mark it down. Check that off. It happened. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. It did. Now, yeah. another one of your accomplishments that I want to talk to you about because I thought this was very fascinating. When you were the NWA Women's World Champion, you have the belt for 948 days, yeah. and that's the third longest reign behind Fabulous Moolah and Debbie Combs. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And I've had and I've had the opportunity to be around both of those women. Oh, amazing! I actually got to work Debbie Combs was like my first match. Really? Ever? Yes. No, I take that back. She was my second match. Okay. I worked her twice. The first time I worked, oh, she kicked the sh- Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was so green. So, so, so green. Uh, yeah. But um, the next couple of months, when I knew I was about to have another match with her. Oh, yeah. I trained. I told her, I said, that match, it said, won't be the same as it was a couple of months ago. Yeah. I'm ready now. <laughs> Well, I think it's better prepared. I say that. (laughs) I think it's so great that you got to work with her. I mean, there's not like, unless you're really in tune with like old school wrestling, wrestling. Debbie Combs is not a name that is thrown around like Fabulous Moolah, Mae Young. I mean, I have Sensational Sherry on my, on my shoulders Mm -hmm. here. That's not a name you hear very often. So like to have like for me being knowing I'm more old school style anyway, but to know like 
Debbie Combs and Fabulous Moolah are the two women that are ahead of you with longer reigns. I'm just like, oh my God. Yeah, right. I love like, it. That's such an honor. I could ever be a part of, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yes, I love but, it. I, mean, I love it. You didn't even lose that championship technically no you had to relinquish it you were injured at the time right yeah i had some health issues going on yeah i had to to get that taken care of and yeah i hate i hate i had to do it that way but at the time that's that was best you know yeah you have to do what's best for your health and and your body especially because exactly people don't realize that but i guess because i was so far along in my career that i knew that i had to focus on me you know, mm-hmm. 20 years ago, yeah, I'd be mean, like, heck with that. I would have wrestled sick, whatever, you know, broken finger, toes or whatever, you know. But yeah, this time at the point in my life, I was like, let me just focus on me because I have kids and I, I want to be here for my kids. So, oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. And I but, mean, but I am, you know, again, another blessing. They reached NWA reached out to me. I'll be going with them up there in June and I'll be uh, working with them as an agent. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, Congratulations. So, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll see how it works out. I go up there in June. I guess they're going to check me out and see how it works out and see, see what happens after that. But well, yeah, along with, with, cool. with teaching and being an agent, has WWE ever reached out to you to ask you one of those kind of positions? Because I mean, obviously with the PC and no. Well, that's no. a shame. No. <laughs> shame on you, WWE. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You know, um, when you do people right, good things come back to you. So you know, oh, maybe I'll it's only a matter of time. Yeah. And I've always tried to, to treat people right and, 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 and just live life right. So, you know, I've been blessed even without WWE. So I'm not gonna, I don't even know if I would want to be a part of that crazy world. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Well, that would probably require you to move too, especially yeah, to right move, now's yeah, kind of society. Yeah, that's a lot. And, and you know how they operate. They could wake up on the wrong side of the bed and be like, ah, we don't need her anymore. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Especially, you know, the so last- like, I don't know if I would want to. I'm 48 years old, so yeah. I don't know if I want to, you know, play those games right now. Yeah. And the <laughs> last couple of weeks, they've been getting rid of a lot of people. Yeah. Yes. Like, I yeah. look at some of those names and I'm like, oh, yeah. Really? You got rid of them? I know. It's, it's really That's scary. It's weird. I don't, I don't get it. You know, they, they, they give you this same line. Uh, creative don't have anything for you right now. Yeah. And I was like, really like i can why in the indies we can tell our own stories and come up with our own storylines in the ring Mm -hmm. but you know wwe it's got to be the writer's uh story (laughs) and i mean i've obviously never pitched a storyline to wwe creative but i know i've i mean chelsea green has been very um open about it and same Mm -hmm. with mickey james that they would go to creative and be like here's an idea here's an idea here's an idea here's an idea and they're just like no Exactly. So you never, you don't know what to do with them. You just yeah. you don't know how to act. You don't know what to say. That's, that's not a fun life. No, no, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but you're no. living the life. I mean, like yeah. you said, now you're, you're fresh out of in-ring retirement, which correct. Yeah. Congratulations mm-hmm. again on that. You're, mm-hmm. you know, going to go up to NWA and check out maybe an agent job there. I mean, yeah. you have your own SWE, SWE agent SWE. there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm good, Steph. I'm yeah, good. you. Yes. <laughs> I think you're more busy now with wrestling yeah. than when you were wrestling. Yes, it's just now no bumps, <laughs> which is even better. <laughs> yes. Yes, that that's the great thing about being on a podcast talking yeah. about <laughs> wrestling right now. I don't have to bump. <laughs> no bump right? Although yeah. I do get that itch sometimes. I'm like, mm, yeah. maybe I should go bump around a little bit. And then it's I'm like, it's in, it's in your blood. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's in us now. You know, yeah. we we'll always want to be a part of it. But like you said, you doing yours right there, sitting in front of that mic, you know, and, and I'm doing mine on the outside uh, of the ring, trying to direct traffic yeah. in the ring. <laughs> See me. I just want to help put over my friends. There you go. You've done a great job. (laughs) Thank you. Well, I think that you have done such an amazing job over your entire career. I mean, we could sit here for days and talk about all of your accomplishments. I think I've hit 
the majority of like some of the bigger <laughs> ones. But yeah. Jazz, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Is there anything, your social media, pro wrestling tease, anything you want to put over um, besides your yeah, wrestling a, school? Yeah, my wrestling school is um, dogpounddojo.com. That's dog with two Gs. Um, our Twitter is, oh God, oh, <laughs> I suck at this. I suck at remembering these things. Um, anyway, you can also hit me up on Twitter, which is phenom underscore jazz. I'm on Facebook is Carlene Begno, the, the phenom jazz on Facebook. Um, yeah, just, if you want to contact me to come in, do a seminar or, or, um, could help me complete my retirement tour. This is all the ways you can, uh, you can find me. And if not, this is what I tell everybody I do a podcast for. You can reach out to Sassy Steph. She knows how to get in touch with me. Absolutely. <laughs> Not yeah. a problem at all. <laughs> Love all you, right, girl. Jazz, it's been phenomenal having you on, no pun intended. Yes. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you do with your students, what you continue to do outside the ring. And just, you're always a delight. I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm sitting here with Dan the Man. He is the author of The Wrestler's Wrestler, which is out and available now. So make sure you guys go and get it. Hey Dan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back. And yeah, The Wrestler's Wrestlers is doing great. I'm very excited. Uh, uh, look at the true masters of the craft of professional wrestling from Strangler Lewis all the way up to Daniel Bryan. So it's a lot of fun to write and I'm glad that it's uh, finally out there after about two years of working on it now. It's a very that. good, it's a very good read so far. I really enjoyed uh, James Mitchell's uh, intro there too, as well. Good. Yeah. I'm glad you like that. The Sinister Minister, some people have asked why we picked him to do the foreword, but I thought he had a real good take and uh, he's an interesting dude. So I was real happy to have him as part of it. I got to meet him a couple of times, probably around 2010 and or 11. And he is a riot to be around. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, I, there's been a couple of times where I've been working on stories for PWI or some other projects and he's given me a quick call and said, hey, uh, I hear you're writing about this. Are you mm -hmm. going to talk about this? You know, some behind the scenes, I'm like, no, don't worry, Jim, I'm not going <laughs> to spill the beans on that. Just, he's, okay, just want to make sure, just want to make yeah. sure. He's, yeah. he's got a lot of great stories too. Absolutely. Like I remember from being around him, like great stories. Yeah, the ones he can tell and the ones he doesn't want to tell. But either way, <laughs> he, he has some great stories. Yes. That's how the wrestling business is, though. Some of those stories you just can never tell. No, nope, absolutely. Well, here are two stories we can tell. Fantastic. See, that's a segue. Yeah. yeah uh, today, with my little look back in wrestling history, I want to talk about two quick things that happened in the WWF, WWE, within the past kind of recent history, within the past 22 years, but it really shows how things have changed with the women's title. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's look back, number one, May 10th of 1999. So 22 years ago, basically, not all that long ago, but it really shows how things have kind of changed. This was probably the lowest point of the WWF women's title, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and that's had some low points with Harvina Whippleman and, and some of the other things that have happened with that championship. But on that night in uh, Orlando, uh, Sable was the reigning WWF women's champion. She was going to defend the title against Deborah McMichael in a, um, uh, basically a bra and panties match, but an evening gown match. So you had mm -hmm. to take off the evening gown to win the match. However, Sable was looking to leave WWF because she had just done her second uh, pictorial for Playboy and she had negotiated with Playboy instead of going through the WWF It had kind of really ruffled some feathers over there and she was looking to get out and she was a champion. She decided not to re-sign her contract. Vince McMahon kind of put down, put his foot down, said this night in Orlando, you're dropping the title and then do what you got to do. Uh, she didn't want to do it. She wanted to drop the title at a house show, didn't want it to be on TV. She was worried that McMahon would have somebody shoot on her, something would go wrong. But on a live edition of Raw, she went out there to defend her title against Deborah Michael in an evening gown match. 
But what she did when she showed up at the arena that day is showed up with her own team of attorneys. They took the contract and they basically rewrote parts of the contract and said, she's not going out there unless this is the way it all works out. Mm -hmm. So as the show was going on, Sable is rewriting the title match. What ended up happening, and this is out there on YouTube, uh, Sable comes out to face Deborah. The match for what it is, and Sable's a heel at this point. She has uh, Nicole Bass in her corner. Deborah Michael is a baby face. As soon as the bell rings, uh, Val Venus walks out to the ring. He distracts Deborah by flirting with her. Sable tears off her evening gown. The match ends. 40 seconds, maybe. That was it. No bumps, no anything. Shawn Michaels, who is the commissioner of the WWF at the time, then jumps up, goes into the ring after burying Sable in like the most crude ways possible in commentary with Jerry Lawler because she was on her way out, mm -hmm. uh, basically takes the mic and says, okay, Deborah got undressed. She's in her bra and panties here. Uh, however, and this is the quote, with puppies like that, I figure that the woman who gets her evening gown torn off is the real winner. Therefore the winner and new WWF women's champion is Deborah, And that's how they took the title off of Sable. Sable and her attorneys basically came up with this entire plan. She ended up leaving the WWF immediately afterwards, got back to her locker room and found out that somebody had, according to her, her own uh, report, somebody had defecated in her bag, <laughs> a big mess. But all yeah. of this happened basically on live TV in Orlando, complete, uh, you know, rewritten at the last moment. And it really shows the low point of the WWF women's title. Yeah. That was, again, May 10th, 1999. Jumping forward to May 11th on 2010. Again, a weird thing that happened with the women's title. This time, though, it was Lay Cool. It was Layla L. and Michelle McCool. And they were facing uh, Beth Phoenix in Buffalo, New York, which is the announced hometown of, of mm -hmm. Beth Phoenix for the women's title. It was a two-on-one match. Layla L., who was kind of the weaker member of the Lay Cool team, got the upset pin, won the title, and they decided that Lay Cool would jointly hold the championship. So it was both Michelle and Layla holding it. Um, again, the, what they ended up doing was splitting the belt in half and each of them carrying half of the title, like one of those friendship bracelets type things. Yeah, I remember that clearly. You do? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so now the story behind that, I talked to Michelle McCool when uh, I was researching my book, Sisterhood of the Squared Circle. And this is what she said about that. She said, that created a ton of controversy. You see, we never knew what was going to happen to the next week. We might, might not be on TV for a month. Every time I was out there, I was looking to see what I could do to try to get attention. What little thing can we do to get people talking and make sure we're on TV, TV again next week? When we won the title from Beth, it was Lay Cool that won the match. I went to the office and wanted to defend the belts Freebird style, where either of us could defend it. Dave Batista heard us talking about it. He said, you know what would really get you heat? You ought to cut that belt in half and share it. Vince loved the idea, so we went out and had it cut in half and magnetized. And that's how it all began. And the reason it all began that way is because, you know, unlike today, and, and that's where we can appreciate everything that's happened with women's wrestling and WWE, the women weren't sure when they'd be on TV again. They, if sad. they didn't have an angle, if they didn't have something, and no writers were pitching anything, they had to pitch it themselves. And that's why we got Lake Cool as the joint champions. So two interesting things that happened this month in history in uh, regards to the WWF, WWE Women's Championship. That's amazing. Like, I remember when I had Molly Holly on and her match with Victoria at WrestleMania, I believe 2019, 20, one of those. I can't remember mm -hmm. exactly which one off the top of my head. Like, there was not going to be a women's championship match. And that's when Molly's like, I'll shave my head. Like, let's do this. And, and they decided, yeah. Yeah, that's what it took. She went out of her way and shaved her head, offered to have her head shaved. And they mm -hmm. still only got, I think, maybe seven or eight minutes for that match and then yeah. the hair cut at, at the end you know but uh it got him on the show and it made a memorable moment so yeah it's i i mean i asked molly and i asked victoria like what's their favorite wrestlemania moments and they both said that that matches their wrestlemania moment even though they had multiple other ones at you know that time so yeah it's crazy so it's come a long way thank goodness i mean <laughs> I, I still, I mean, I'm biased, obviously, as a women's wrestler. I wish they still had more time 
In fact, I wish AEW had more time. I wish everybody had more time to do more things with the women because especially now the amount of women that are signed to these companies and have more talent than the companies know what to do with. And it's so sad that they're not getting the opportunities to really show what they have because, I mean, yes, they have considerable more time than they did back, you know, with the Bellas when they were saying, you know, give divas a chance. They were getting 30 seconds to two minutes most of the time. Yep. So now we're, now we're getting tag team championship matches, especially I'm so happy for Natty and Tamina. And then also, you know, we have our women's titles on both, on both shows and then AEW, you know, they're doing a little bit more with their elevation and dark and stuff like that, but it's like, oh, give me more. And then ring of honor, they have their women's tournament coming up soon. It's like, oh man, this is, this is what I want, but I'm not, I want more. Keep giving it to me. I want I think it, you know? I've, I'm going to have to agree with what Mick Foley suggested a few weeks ago. I think it's really time for WWE to do a women's show. Um, you know, it's because if, if you're doing a, if you're formatting, formatting a Monday night, raw, uh, mm -hmm. three hour raw, where you only have six to eight matches in three hours of time, which is what they do. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, you might get two women's matches and with the depth of the roster that they have in WWE, let alone internationally and in all the different promotions, it's not nearly enough time. It's so not. it's about time for the women to get their own show and, and let that kind of survive on its own. You know, to me, I mean, you, you already have these shows that are specifically network oriented, like WWE UK. I mean, maybe it's on in the UK on TV, but here it's just on the network and stuff. I think if you're not willing to give them a prime spot on TV time, you give it to them on the network. I mean, you're looking to fill new content all the time. So give them, give them an hour slot where it's just women's wrestling. You know what I mean? And I know they're going back out on the road soon. So that's going to be a lot more difficult, but during this COVID time, they could have played with all these different ideas to see what stuck. And then maybe they give them a prime time spot, you know, in, I'm sure one cable company somewhere would eventually pick it up. Cause like I had a quote, actually, I, I'll read it to you real quick. Um, Cause I had an interview recently with Maria Canellis. And the reason why I asked her is because Stephanie McMahon tweeted, what if women's sports were given the same level of money and media as men? When you air the games, people watch. If you promote people will show interest. If you invest, it'll pay off. And it's like, let's do this especially wwe has those kind of capabilities so exactly yeah. and the thing is even the critics even the critics who say you know it'll never fly women's wrestling is a novelty okay fine but if you put it on tv or on the internet if it doesn't draw ratings like any other show then you take it off you, yeah but if you never try because you just think it's not going to draw after you know two three years after we had the women headline wrestlemania and a month and a half after they headline night one of wrestlemania mm -hmm. i mean i think that there's definitely the groundswell there's enough support there so it's about time for somebody to try it definitely and if you think about it especially i mean this is just the wwe product of course that we're talking about of course there's there's all the other ones as well but wwe i mean bianca belair and rhea ripley who are both the champions are homegrown. I mean, Rhea Ripley was also in the independence in Australia, did a lot of traveling, but I mean, she really toned and grew and did a lot of things in NXT to become who she is currently. So to have, and I, like I said, Bianca Belair is actually a WWE product and you're trusting them to run the show with your titles trust more of those people and especially the independent girls that have been there for you know bailey of course um sasha banks um charlotte's more of a homegrown girl there too i mean she was on the independence for like two minutes yeah if that, um yeah. but there's becky lynch there's so many women that have just just the ones i named though you know the the four horse women plus bianca and and Rhea, like that talent's insane. And then you have Tamina and Natty as a, ta I, 
I could go on and on. Yeah. And wrestling. the further and the further you go, if when you look beyond WWE into developmental, beyond mm-hmm. developmental into the independence and everything that's out there, there is a ton of talent out there and, and there's more every year that's, and better every year. That's so true. Like I my first match was in 2007 and I would say at that time, you know, obviously the there was the PWI top 50 women. But which, I would say which I introduced. I'm yeah. the one who created that. So thank you. but yeah, thank you. Cause <laughs> that's that's a big deal for someone like me who was in the independence when I made that list. I was like, holy man, I'm doing something right, you know, I'm getting my name out there, I'm doing things. But now you have the top 100. Like back then in 2007, yeah, of course there was more than 50 women in wrestling, but like that was basically your shimmer roster one weekend plus the WWE girls. Like maybe 30 of those girls were shimmer and 20 were WWE. Yeah, close to but it. But yeah. now, I mean, it's insanity the amount of talent that these girls have. And there's girls coming up in the business that we haven't even heard of yet or just starting to see because they just turned 18 and they've been training since they were 13 years old. You know, it's just, I, it's crazy. It's crazy. And what I'm, that means is it's probably time for a sassy, stuffy comeback. <laughs> let's knock on wood we'll see what happens when the border opens up <laughs> nice, nice. i would love to because there's there's women that came in after i moved to canada that i never got to work of course some of them are in wwe now like one of the ones top on my list is shotzi black uh blackheart but there's tons of women that i'm like oh i i got the itch i want to <laughs> wrestle them you know so badly because i'm just like i want to see what they they do personally like I see what I see on TV or on the internet or whatever and I'm just like oh man there's still so much that I want to do but we'll see what happens when everything opens up I'm rooting for you (laughs) thank you all right Dan as always it has been a delight and I can't wait to talk to you again soon sounds good thank you for having me definitely see you guys next time